hi. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna pretend like I didn't do a stream earlier today, uh, in which I didn't record audio for like 90% of it. We're just gonna pretend that didn't happen. We're gonna pretend that I didn't make a new scene in OBS and forget to add the audio controller. That never happened. This is all brand new. In fact, this is my first stream in months. So let me make sure this is, is this actually happening? Can I hear me? Is that me? That sounds like me. Okay. Um, yeah. Is it Okay. We're just going to pretend uh, this never happened. And here we are again. And here I am for the first time in 2019. In fact, almost first time in second half of 2018 even. So, um, hi, I'm Scott. You may remember me from such things as this Twitch channel. Uh, let me just click a couple things if you don't mind. Please, pardon me. Pardon my mess. Yeah. So, uh it's been a while I, I i messed up i i could say that i have no excuse but i do have hundreds of excuses and those excuses were work like i had a big contract job work travel a bunch of freelance stuff and i just lost the thread on streaming unfortunately because this job these jobs they took my whole brain and i felt like at the end of the day i just didn't have a brain and many evenings i had to do additional freelance work so plus travel, whatever. Now I'm back and I got back and it's this like fourth week and third, fourth week of January, third week. And I'm end of the third week of January. Now is when we start. I'm starting with a slight handicap. I think I came back with a cold from holiday travel. Uh, anyway, this, the function of streaming today really was just to remind myself how to do it. Like get the stuff working. I got these, I have some lights now. Do the shadow puppets on my own face. Um, I got some lights and stuff and uh, trying to remember how everything works, trying to remember how to do this. And uh, it seems like it's working this time. I thought it was working earlier though. I messed up, I messed up big time. So let's see, it seems like stuff's working, right? Yeah, um, okay, so the thing I wanted to do today is uh, not make anything. I do want to get back to making stuff. I want to get back to doing some Unity stuff. I have an idea for a new project that I would like to get ready uh, for the launch of the Oculus Quest. I also have various other interesting projects that I could maybe talk about soon. But today, I just want to talk about games. And um, part of the reason is because uh, next month, I will be teaching a workshop called survey of 21st century storytelling, I think, which is secretly just a way for me to talk about uh, narratives and video games. And so I've been reflecting on those things a lot as I get ready to to prep the work workshop contents. Am I doing any of this right? Is this how this works? Yeah, it seems probably right, right? Anyway, um, yeah, so I was just gonna talk about the games I played in 2018. And uh, I don't know why I want to do this, but I want to talk about all of them. So I didn't play a crazy number or anything, but I thought I would just go through the games I played in the order that I played them and just talk about them. Uh, talk about what I thought about them, talk particularly narratively as the focus. So uh, yeah, without much further ado, let me just click a couple things and, and then we'll get going. Hopefully this thing. Hopefully I actually have audio here. Yes, perhaps. I'm even gonna check just to be sure as soon as the stream catches up. Cause gosh, what a what a debacle. That looks like me. Yeah, here. Yes. Yeah, okay. That looks and sounds like me, I think. So yes, um, let's talk about some games from 2018. And let's start doing that by talking about a game that actually came out in 2017. It did come out in 2018 on Twitch. Switch. This is Twitch. Switch is the thing you hold. Uh, and it is called something like Hollow Knight. Yes, here it is where I can see it as well. So I love this game. I think it is, uh, I might have called it my 2017 game of the year, even though I actually finished it after the new year started, but it is, it is beautiful, it is charming. It has this thick, morose atmosphere for something that is kind of simple and even sort of cute in its art style. The gameplay, um, not necessarily, I don't have a great deal of nostalgia for any Metroidvania games or really kind of platformers in general, but it 
resonated with me. There were also some of the trappings of a Dark Soulsy game, and I'm very much a Dark Soulsy person. And both in sort of the dark conceit, but also the sort of mysterious lore. Um, and even in this weird, barren world, the ability to have some some meaningful interactions with a few interesting characters. And so I loved that. And I would highly recommend this game. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking I might pick up a copy on Switch to play through all the DLC as well, because I, I truly enjoyed it a lot. The one thing I didn't love about it is, um, I'm trying not to get too spoilery today, but at the end of the game, there's a secret-ish ending. Um, like the main real boss. And to get to that boss, you have to complete a level called something like the White Castle. Surely it's not really called White Castle, is it? Um, that is all like precision platforming with spinning buzz saws over the place, like a weird Meat Boy ripoff. And so, ripoff's strong term. But it, it's just weird to be in this like very cohesive, um, careful world and then one of the last levels you had to complete really felt out of place and it was a very different kind of gameplay that i didn't super love so anyway that's the one one criticism otherwise i really i can't say enough good things uh about about this game hollow knight uh night in the woods also a 2017 game that i finished very early in 2018 also i i, I think i wrote about some of these in, in my little write-up i did last year but i also really like this game. I maybe didn't love it as much as Hollow Knight, but one of the things that I think is super special about it and that, that the thing that really struck me was how well the creators of this game hit this perfect blend of emotions. It's hard to even describe. It's this blend of sort of comfortable, miserable, nostalgia with disappointment. I don't know quite how to describe it, but it's the feeling you, you get when you go home again after you've left. And I've, I've frequently had these periods in my life where I've had to do kind of a reset and go back to, back to Texas. And even when I visit for the holidays, I, I get kind of this feeling of like, gosh, what do you call it? It's just, it's a hometown blues, something like that. So I think this game, nails that in a special way. And I would say that's the best part about the game. There's there's some some good characters. There's some charming, funny interactions between them. Uh, although I would say that the end, I feel like the end blows it a little bit. There, there, there's something that happens at the end, which is kind of an interesting twist, but the way that twist is handled by the characters just like did not feel right to me. Um, but I would still unequivocally unequivocally recommend this game i really enjoyed it uh even though it's really a 2017 game we're gonna ignore that um destiny 2 this is in here because i played it it is not necessarily my my kind of game i don't uh generally love shoot people games i mainly played it well i partially played it just because i'd heard enough interesting things about the lore of destiny and kind of the the weird world and that seemed consensus seems to maybe be that that was a little i'm going to say better done in the first game because i know it had a lot of problems but it was, it was more interesting in its mystery in the first game maybe um uh i thought the world was pretty interesting another thing that drew me to it is just it looked pretty beautiful and then i came recommended as a very beautiful game and i just wanted to kind of see it so I don't, I mean, this is really a 2017 game again, right? But I guess Forsaken is out and people love that. So in general, I would say like, if it's your kind of game, it's your kind of game. It's not really my kind of game and I would maybe trade those hours back or trade them for something else, but it definitely, it, it had some beautiful um, moments in its set pieces and and the storytelling it does through design and environments I think is very strong even if the actual story was just kind of whatever um, Actown Enemy Unknown is an older game I think it was from 2012 originally true or false um, that I just picked up because I kind of felt like it was a blind spot having never played it and uh, just wanted to give it a shot. I just played it on my laptop kind of between other things. I did not finish a full run. I kind of just bounced off of it eventually, but I did enjoy it. I think 
it's probably partially a time and place thing. I should have played it then, but there was a game this year that makes this game look not so hot that we'll, we'll talk about later. Not so hot in my, by comparison. Uh, Last Guardian. Last Guardian kind of bummed me out. Um, I was a little disappointed because it seemed weird and atmospheric and emotionally expressive in a way that I thought I would be into, but I just couldn't, I couldn't quite latch onto it. And I, I don't even really know why. I just couldn't, maybe I need to give it some more time or maybe it was just a distracted moment in my life, but the the cost that it's, uh, the barrier to investment felt like, oh, it doesn't control super great and I'm not immediately invested in the world I'm in or the story I'm in and, and I didn't feel the, uh, motivation to try to force that that investment maybe some other time i'll visit it revisit it i was you know it was it took it was a game that took so long to be created i was interested kind of to just see what the results were and the results did not click with me immediately um okami is another older game that has been remastered and now is out on newer consoles uh i played it on ps4 it's also out on switch now i think it was ps4 last year yeah um it's charming and it's beautiful and it has this sort of lovely narrative framework of ridding this corrupted world of its blight through painterly flowers and freshness and the style is gorgeous and the way this style interplays with the game is really beautiful and it's, it's a very enjoyable game. The only issue was I kind of played through what I thought was the game and then I sort of thought I was done and then apparently that was just the game opening up. So. I don't really know how much more there is on the back end, but I, I sort of felt like I got what I needed out of it. Um, and maybe there were just some things about the controls that felt a little antiquated or I wasn't loving them or, or maybe just the combat system didn't feel quite what I wanted to be. I don't, I don't exactly know what my problem was. Maybe I didn't have a problem. Maybe I just got, got the amount of Okami that I, that I needed. Uh, Subnautica, however, I don't know why I say however, it's not really a contrast. It, so, uh, in contrast to a world of survival-y games that, that happened over the last few years, none of which really um, caught my eye. Subnautica, something about it seemed interesting uh, just in terms of, in, in with all these other Kind of planetary exploration games this aquatic game seemed interesting and the look of it seemed really interesting but what really caught me was i played it in vr and even as a person who's kind of made a living on vr for the last four or so years uh i i hadn't found a vr experience that i loved and wanted and was invested in like i i was just kind of even though I've made tons of content for VR, I kind of was only keeping the headset on for the amount of time to create that content. And this was the first time that it was like, okay, yeah, I do actually want to keep this headset on for whatever it was I played, 60 hours. Um, it has some problems for sure. And the, the problems a lot of those kinds of games share. Um, but I really liked it. The, the narrative as it was in the game was just... Um, you know, your crash landed and you have to escape. It wasn't, there wasn't a ton to that, but the, the, the feelings and experiences that the creators were able to put together, um, kind of through the, the, the environment, uh, the environment was, was, was pretty breathtaking sometimes on, on a wide spectrum. At one end, when you're under the ship and there's giant sea monsters about to kill you, it can be so tense and so horrifying and so unpleasant, especially in VR. And at the other end, you sometimes come through this murky water deep, deep, deep in the ocean and you find these gorgeous, gorgeous um, vistas of, of whatever. They, things get more exotic and more weird the deeper you go. And, and that, those moments had almost this sort of beautiful trance-like meditative secluded in the ocean experiences that really balanced well with the uh, horror-ish parts of the game. Um, so I, I really enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to the DLC. I'm not sure if I would have liked it as much had it not been in VR. I kind of think I would not, but but it is probably still my favorite VR experience to date. Uh, Witcher 3, older game, 2016, correct? Yes, no, 2015. 
I don't know what to say about this because everybody's already talked about it being the greatest game of all time. It is exceptionally good. I also played all the DLC, totaling like 135 hours this year. That's a lot of hours to spend on a thing, but it's a pretty special experience. Some of the storytelling is 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 pretty incredible. The main story, maybe not so much. There's tons of problems with it, too. Um, but in general, it's hard not to recommend. It's a it's a it's a pretty special thing, and I'm excited to see what CD Projekt Red is doing with Cyberpunk. Even though, again, I don't love shoot people shoot people games. Uh, Luminous remastered. I did not play this in its original incarnation years ago. I'm not even quite sure when. Vita, maybe even PSP era. Um, but it's a charming rhythm game that's sort of bright and poppy and happy and has messages of of kind of unity and togetherness and uh i enjoyed it i played it on switch i played it pretty obsessively for a while on a trip um through kind of its main story story whatever the main progression of of, of levels is um and it's interesting because it's not really a rhythm game even though it sort of becomes one it's not really the best puzzle game but there's something about the interplay of the puzzles and the music that that's really that that is really compelling um and it doesn't so it does the thing a lot of puzzle games do where of this kind of puzzle game where harder just means more speed you know the tetris idea like it's harder because it's faster but there's something else where each individual level and there's dozens maybe it's a hundred um that might not be true but i think it's something like that each level has a totally original art design and soundtrack and that plays into the difficulty in an interesting way that sometimes is frustrating but where some levels are hard to play because of the design of the levels and it seems deliberate and that was an interesting choice and that will come up again in a, in a game we'll talk about a little later but i did enjoy that it's one of the things i've liked most on switch this year i've kind of bummed out by the switch in general just because i really got it to play zelda and then was excited to play odyssey on it but i haven't been super into any original content for it and so many of the ports i already own other places or they seem really expensive I, I don't know anyway this is one of the things i enjoyed most on the switch this year um this thing however seemed like something i was going to enjoy on the switch but it, it kind of just bummed me out and I, I spent a lot of time with it and i kind of i i would take that time back for sure i think the promise of an rpg that narrative heavy with eight intertwining stories seemed really compelling to me, but it's not that at all. It's just eight totally separate stories, very linear, that have almost nothing to do with each other and sell those sort of forced together at the end. There's some interesting aspects of the combat, but you have to do a lot of it. And even though I did get to the secretish boss with one team kind of fully built out and all of the secret jobs the idea of like oh i'm gonna have to actually go grind all of these other characters with no story left to do this no thanks it, it, it would have probably been hours and hours of more grinding with zero story to motivate um yeah it it, it has a beautiful style it looks good the combat before you get to grind time the combat is pretty interesting and compelling but it just i don't know it, it feels like a sort of a a lie a little bit i think uh i think it's worth looking at though because the art style is something interesting but man narratively not not so hot uh no man's sky much has been said about it i've been interested in it kind of from the start um maybe not fully on the hype train, but I loved games like Starbound and it sort of seemed like, oh, this could be like 3D Starbound. Um, I played almost none of it. I would still like to to spend some more time with it. But um, I think one thing, I don't know, in some ways I feel like Subnautica scratched this sort of alien exploration itch for me in a way that I didn't feel the need to play No Man's Sky. Um, so soon after it I, I do plan to revisit it again like the idea of 3d starbound sounds cool but I, I just didn't spend much time on it this year uh this game so the i have no nostalgia for the old games in fact i'm a little like put off by them just the the attitude and tone definitely not my thing and even when i heard they were making a new god of war and that it was going to be norse i was like 
tentatively interested, but then when I found out it was just going to be Kratos again, I was like, oh man, that that guy, that like angsty early two thousands guy, is is who we're who we're bringing with us into into this new new world. But I think they the idea. I think the creators of the game recognized that and they kind of did an interesting thing. They were like, okay, what's this like hardcore, young, fiery dude gonna be like when he's a little older, when he's a dad, when he's got a kid? And I think it's interesting. I think the world uh, of Norse mythology and the way they've kind of tangled it up with his story is interesting. Gameplay is interesting. It looks beautiful. My biggest criticism of the game is just the world is enormous and gorgeous but almost empty like it's really there's some really cool mechanics and there's cool aspects and i do like this game a lot but one of the things that they do is there's basically just two npcs and it's the the, the story conceit is like oh yeah they're kind of magical dwarves and they can just teleport everywhere but it really kind of feels like man you guys only have two people and you're spreading them real thin um and there weren't that many bosses and and you know there there were definitely it's come out recently, clear compromises in the creation of this game, but I, I think it, it is pretty special. There are some moments narratively that I think are pretty pretty striking, and I, I think it's worth playing. Uh, Dead Cells. I know people love Dead Cells. I know people did love Dead Cells. I bounced off of it hard. I think I already had it, even going into it, I had a slightly bad taste in my mouth for it, just because for no reason, because they're different games, people seem to frequently uh talk about dead cells and hollow knight in the same breath i don't know why they're completely different but anyway i love hollow knight and dead cells it's just another rogue like another one and there's been a million of them and i maybe it's just fatigue in that genre but it, it's pretty and it seems well executed but i just had no patience for it um which is a little weird because there's a game later in the year that i did get into but this one just I don't know, maybe I'll try it again later, but the times that I've tried it have just kind of bounced off because it's, yeah, okay. This, I mean, the, that kind of rogue-like formula, I care about narrative and I care about storytelling and it is, it's it's a little bit of a cop-out to me. It seems like sometimes roguelike because you're just like churning through the same thing and there's the the, it feels like things get recycled a lot. It's like rather than make just one good large experience, you make something smaller that you you replay. I don't know. That's probably not entirely fair. Anyway, come, came highly recommended, but did not love it. Um, Battle Chef Brigade, I heard good things about, and I think it was in in general charming and interesting. It wasn't super great on any front. Um, I like the general idea of the genre mashup with the. Uh, kind of gym puzzle game plus some light combat and I liked the narrative idea of kind of the all of that wrapped around a kind of cooking show um, so I, I, I liked it although weirdly kind of like some other games this year I got to a major story climax that really I guess was setting up for the wider open game and I, I just felt done and I think that's okay like I, in the past I've been a completionist to the point that I'll end up hating games sometimes. Um, but in, in, in this case, I kind of got what I wanted out of it and didn't really feel the need to go further. And I think I can reasonably recommend it. Uh, this game, mm, I don't know, this game, very hypey. People super into it. And it does some beautiful things. The city is gorgeous. Like flying, swinging through New York during golden hour, golden hour is just stunning. Um, the story is kind of whatever. The, uh, I don't know, the boss battles were kind of two for one deals that felt almost slightly lazy. But the thing that bothered me most about it is 90% of this game felt like it was lifted from the Arkham games, which is really weird because it's a different studio and a totally different comic property from a different comic publisher. It just felt a little gross. It's like, yeah, okay, you went to the Arkham games and you lifted everything you possibly could you added an air juggle, but you also felt the need to steal stealth, which the stealth, even the Spider-Man stealth parts aren't great, but the parts where you have to do stealth as Mary Jane, just 
horrible. Like it made me want to not play the game. Um, I don't have any problems with her character. Um, although the idea of the spider team, you know, like her as a member of the team also felt a little lifted from the Arkham games where it was Batman and his team with Oracle, etc. So I, I don't know. It's it. it I kind of wish I didn't buy it full price. I think I, I'm going to call it maybe worth it just for the technical spectacle of the uh, of the city, but definitely did not did not adore adore that game. Uh, the Surge, I just dipped into briefly, but the same story almost as almost every time I try a Souls like or a Souls inspired game, I kind of bounce off of it. And I it was interesting to see that in the sci-fi world, but. I just felt no no real draw. I just kind of wanted to get in and, and check it out. I'm vaguely interested in the new one this year, but I think it's out this year. But uh, in general, I leave the, the Souls games to From, I would say. Uh, Donut County is a charming little experience. Am I saying charming too much? Uh, it's adorable. It's a cute story, pretty simple gameplay that maybe I could have... I would have maybe preferred that it was a little more in depth in the puzzles, although I kind of like that it was open enough that sort of anyone could play. Kind of a bite-sized experience, short and sweet and 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 funny. Good writing, like overall, I I wouldn't call it like an astoundingly great game, but in general, I I, I can recommend it without reservation. I think it was a a pretty funny little thing, and I would kind of like to see more of that, like weird experimental experiences like this I, I i definitely could deal with more of, of that it, it did have good writing and the, again the story was was charming and interesting enough that it didn't exactly matter that whether or not it was the most robust gameplay of of all time um heavy rain so i had never played any one of these games but have heard a lot about quantic dreams at the studio um, and David Cage's games. I mainly just played this in preparation of a game that was releasing this year. I, there's some pretty special things, I would say, in terms of its attempts to push the boundaries of interactive storytelling. And for that, I think this game is actually pretty important. Um, the biggest one, I think, is this idea of you have to do everything or almost everything. It's In general, you don't just push a button to... Um, to cause an action to happen in the game. You have to actually like move the controller or tilt it or multiple buttons or something like that, which I thought was pretty interesting. The story is kind of goofy, goofy and weird in a way that I, I kind of liked. The twist was sort of whatever. I liked that there was a lot of branching possibilities in the narrative and I was pretty pleased with the ending that I got. So I think it's kind of, it has this cult classic status, but I think it's even a little more important than that uh, narrative wise. I think it does some cool stuff. Uh, the next game from that studio, uh, I, I really liked. I feel like this game wasn't super well received, but I thought it was interesting. I liked the story. I, for the most part, liked the way the interactions went. I kind of hated the what felt like a very forced romance subplot, but I did kind of like the way the game let you fight against that a little bit, which was interesting. Um, although there's parts of the narrative, I think, that just didn't hold up if you, if you couldn't believe suspend disbelief of this particular narrative uh, of, of romantic connection but in general i i liked it and enjoyed it and thought it was a a good experience and again an experience that was trying to do something different um and both of those games i was really just leading up into play uh, to play this game um and it it has some problems it's the general idea it's gotten a lot of flack for the general idea of uh a view of civil rights that's maybe not the most nuanced through the lens of cyborg civil rights and which is is relatively where well worn territory but i i feel like people have been maybe a little too hard in it i liked it i liked what it tries to do narratively i like all of the possibilities that or then the notion that there can be so many possibilities for any one chapter to play out. In fact, after each chapter in the game, you see the full decision tree of the game and everything that could have played out. And it's pretty astounding to see how those things could go. Um, 
Two of the characters I wasn't super invested in, but Connor, this character here, I actually really was interested in his story and his arc. And while it wasn't as um, it's much more modern gameplay wise than Heavy Rain, it, it almost felt like it lost a little of something um, because of, again, I think the deliberateness of Heavy Rain is, is one of the important parts about it. So. Uh, I will say something funny about this game. I didn't finish it. I had to travel right when I was at the ending. And when I came back, I found myself kind of racked with anxiety because all of the main characters can die and all the secondary characters can die. And if you don't um, make the right choices, they will, they will die. And and they'll it's just game over for that particular character. And I made it, I'm probably like five minutes away from the end, but I'm at the very end with everybody alive. And I kind of, I'm not invested enough in the overall narrative to need to see the ending. I don't know exactly what it is. It was, it was partially just weird timing with travel, but I, I will assume I will finish it uh, one of these days. This game. So, so, so far I've said that I want to focus on narrative games and this game doesn't have much of a narrative other than like a, a pretty fun general narrative construct. I've said that I am not super into... Um, roguelike games but this this kind of does that but it does it in a way that i think is way more flexible and interesting than something like dead cells and i think uh well i did comment on on xcom and that i didn't fall in love with it but this this kind of turn-based strategy um tactical strategy i don't know quite what to call it i guess it's turn-based strategy game is that the right answer for this but i kind of love this game because it is a combat puzzle game almost like you're 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 placing your your three giant robot mechs on a map and trying to save the world from the giant insects that are on the map and it can be really it takes a lot of thought and planning the interaction of all these things is really interesting and one of the things i've heard it praised for which i totally agree with is a lot of times in games like this or in the, in, in the wider genre of games like this, like in XCOM, there's a ton of randomness. You can be standing one foot from an alien and pull the trigger and miss, and it's very frustrating. In this, all the cards are on the table. You know exactly the behavior of every entity on the screen, including your mechs, the buildings, every enemy. You know exactly what they're going to do in a given turn, and you just have to... Uh, kind of architect the perfect way for that turn to play out. And it's really interesting. I'm currently in the process of um, unlocking all the other mechs and, and, and sweeping up some trophies. And I may end up trying to 100% it. I'm not totally sure. But it is, I don't know, this or Subnautica may be, may be my games of the year for 2018, which is weird because neither one of them would I say narrative is the strong suite, but sweet suit, strong suit. Uh, but But here we are. This game, this freaking game, this game I love and I hate it. And that it it bums me out because my experience of this game is that the game itself is a masterpiece and the story is a masterpiece and it's unbelievable the scope and breadth of it, but the controls fought against me the entire time. And again, I played Heavy Rain this year where the controls are absurd. But even by the end of that, I was like, okay, I can do the things I want. I, I got it. 60, 70 hours, I never quite got that place with, with Red Dead. And it was really frustrating. And I, so many people I hear like constant apologies for this game, but I think the controls are, are not just bad, but hostile. Like the idea, how many times did I try to greet someone and accidentally shoot them in the face or pull my gun on them or whatever. And it's not just that. I think there, there's problems with the world and there's problems with the interactions and there's definitely problems with the story. But the, the redemption part of this and that character and where that goes and what it means, I think is, is pretty outstanding and is, if you could cut away all the, all the fluff, man, that, 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 that piece of this is, is, breathtaking and the, the parts of the world and the look and the scope of the world and the way everything moves and interacts and the clockwork nature of it all is also pretty breathtaking but 
I just don't know if it's good. Like it's, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know that I will ev ever feel feel fully resolved about this game. Kind of, um, kind of, kind of a kind of a heartbreaker. Um, but but required essential. I don't know. Maybe you watch videos of it uh, of of the uh, the high points. Um, Tetris Effect came out late in the year. Played it late in the year by the same designer who did uh, Luminous, which I talked about earlier. And this is a weird one because Tetris is like the greatest game of all time. And so it gets a lot of gets a lot of credit just on that, you know? Like it gets high marks just from being Tetris and it's a good Tetris. It does that part well. What it adds to that are sort of the rhythmic and stylistic elements from Luminous and then also VR support. So my initial playthrough was non-VR and I was almost a little disappointed because I felt like it cost a lot. I mean, it just seemed like, it seemed well done and interesting and fun, but it didn't seem, I don't know, it just felt like it was a little overpriced for the thing that it was. And then later I went back and did get to play it in VR and it, and it made me feel a little better about it. Um, but, no, it made me feel better about it in general, I would say. I would say it's very good. I think it's, I, I would kind of wish it was on Switch and then I could play that Tetris instead of some other Tetrises on Switch. Um, but yeah, I, I, I like it a lot. It does that same thing of every level has its own style, its own music. It also does the same thing where that, um, the visual style of that can interfere with your ability to play for better or worse, which is kind of interesting as a challenge, but can be frustrating. But it's it's a pretty special, heartfelt thing that I think is a, it's more than just Tetris. And I think there's there's something to be said for that, but also it's mostly Tetris and the most of what's good about it is, is, the, is the Tetris part. Um, Shadow of the Colossus is one of those classics that I never played, but always heard about. I was very excited for the remaster. I was curious too, because it seemed like the remaster was just about changing the look, but not really changing anything about the core of the gameplay. And I have not finished this yet, and I'm not sure that I will. I love this sort of narrative world it lives in and i love the kind of how the forlorn emptiness of the world says a lot and these sort of giant sad creatures like there's there's a real beauty to this world but at the end of the day you climb up things and stab them in the head repeatedly and you do it over and over again like i was a little surprised with how repetitive that is and while i do kind of like the idea of like yeah it's just bosses there's nothing else there's no other gameplay um i don't know maybe i did too much at once. I'm not exactly sure, but, and it may just be that it's of a certain time and, and it is what it should be, but it didn't, uh, didn't set the world on fire. It's a beautiful thing. I think it's good to play, but I do feel like I've, I've missed out by not playing it in the time and place that it was really a, a product of maybe. Uh, Oberden, this game almost could be my favorite game of the year. It is this weird sort of detective insurance mystery where you have to figure out, you go aboard a ship where everybody's dead and you have to figure out how they died and who they are and who killed them. And it's a very interesting interplay that's a lot like the game Clue, but instead of trying to figure out who killed Mr. Body in what room and with what, you have 60 people and you have to say who killed them um, in, with what insane thing. And again, who, who they are even. So I really like it a lot. There's some places that I think it doesn't do great. I think there's parts of the gameplay loop that are really frustrating and repetitive um, that seem just like stylistic choices that didn't, I, that, that feel to me like maybe they were the wrong choice that really messed with the pacing. As far as the solving of the mysteries, I was a little disappointed that the solutions, um, and you know, there's, I think, I think there were 60, maybe 30, but I think there were 60 people. Is that right? That's a lot of people. Seems like too many, maybe it was 30. Um, I really can't remember, it was a lot. Between 30 and 60, let's say. Um, but I was a little disappointed that like, oh, well, 
not every one of them is unique. And you really find out a lot of them in sort of the same way, in a way that was a little disappointing to me. Like I would have preferred that there were half as many people and that each person's solution was different rather than being like, okay, well, I already know I've found four people in the same specific way and it's a little annoying. And there's so many people that it's hard to get invested into more than maybe two or three of them. Um, so that didn't hold up super well for me. And then the story, I did play through and, and get the twist ending. And, and I just felt like it didn't, I was like, that, that was the twist. Like it was a little underwhelming. So it's very good. It's very interesting. It has a very interesting art style that I don't know why it has that art style, but I guess like tons of games are 8-bit for no reason. So this game can have its style for no reason. Sometimes the style was a little frustrating when you're trying to tell what's going on. Um, but in general, I really liked this game. I feel like it's almost sort of the first pass at a kind of game I could really see myself enjoying with a more a more robustly assembled narrative without as much repetition, I think. Um, and I, I'm being hard on it. Like, it's really good and it's very special and it's very different. And so if, in that regard, it's, it's, it's great. It just, I think there's there's... There's work to be done in this genre. I think it's a cool, this newish genre, sort of. I heard it called uh, like Murder Sudoku. Um, but I, I really enjoyed this game. Definitely very high on my list. Probably higher than some of the AAA games we, we just looked at. Um, and then this was a 2017 game. It's the last game I played. I kind of heard, <clears throat> I kind of knew the criticisms of it going in. And the main criticism being like, this game is all golf. It's an RPG around golf, but like you go into the world and you solve RPG problems by playing golf. And then after that, you play more golf. And so it got a little redundant and a little tedious, but it was pretty good for a travel game. Um, I was a little disappointed in the story because it was pretty funny and had pretty interesting writing of definitely writing of a certain kind of like goofy RPG, self-aware kind of writing. But then it kind of didn't go anywhere. Like I felt like the ending was really anticlimactic climactic and some of the threads that had been um sort of introduced didn't really come together at the end so i i don't know it was it's it's pretty charming but it was um not the best and it's a 2017 game so it's weird to end this list with it but i think that's i think that's what i played last year um and that's that I just wanted to kind of go through and and for myself, just kind of wrap up some opinions on those. I think really, um, I don't know. I don't like, I guess I could try to give some awards off the top of my head. I think that, I think that my favorite interactive experience of last year was playing Subnautica in VR. Like that was, that was something else. And I think, I think my favorite game, um, was maybe Into the Breach or Obra Dent, just as a game, probably Into the Breach. And I think my, my favorite story, for as much as I hate all the other parts of it, I think, God, not all of the other parts of it, it's, I have complicated feelings, is, is Red Dead 2, which is really no surprise to anybody. Um, I think one of the things I was a little disappointed with last year you know, there's been games from the, a few years previous where I feel like almost every year there was a game that blew me away. That was like a life-changing game or history-changing game where it's like, this is going to change the way stuff is done in the future. And I didn't feel that as much uh, this year. There weren't games that I was like mentally obsessed with in the, in the same way that, I, that I'd been previous uh, over, over just a few years prior. And... Looking ahead to 2019, I'm not sure that I see anything that I think is going to be astounding. There's definitely stuff I'm looking forward to, uh, just to name a few. I'm looking forward to Metro Exodus. Those games have problems, but I really love the world of those games. I think if you haven't played them, it's definitely worth playing those. And I think uh, uh, Shadows Die Twice, Sekiro, is that what the game is called? The new From game I'm super interested in. I'm slightly turned off by it just because I've always thought that From's I've never liked the way From Software does humans. I always like their monsters better. And so I just, I, like the footage I've seen of the game, I kind of don't like the way it looks, but we'll see. I, I definitely want to play it. Um, what else is a major? Those are really the two in the near term, probably games I'm most most excited, most excited for. Um, I'm not really sure what to be excited for in VR. 
I don't know offhand what, what's big and upcoming. I think that just in general, the game I'm absolutely most excited for broadly is uh, Death Stranding, but I don't even, who even knows what that game is. Uh, anyway, I did a stream this time. It's, there seems to be audio this time, and I, I think I'm gonna start uploading this to YouTube and get in the habit of that. We'll get back to making Unity stuff. We'll get back to talking about making things and all that stuff soon. I just wanted a, it's my practice, my practice stream. Uh, so thank you for joining me. I don't remember if I had some way that I used to sign off, but uh, I'll just wave. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye.